overthrow the US and become the kind of yes superpower. Hey guys, it's the loud guys. Today we are going to watch why the USA will always be the global superpower. And I don't agree to this video. Like, how can a country can always be the global superpower? There has to be a time when they will be succeeded by someone else, and they will be have they will have competition. Like even USA today has competition with the likes of Russia and then China. But yeah, they are no match to US military. We have seen this in all the other videos that okay. Nobody can U defeat USA at this point of time. But also we have to remember, even the Royal Army of UK also was the biggest army. Also, they were the greatest and they had most of the world at their feet. But yes, they were not like global superpower for long. And like at one point of time, everything came crumbling. And they, uh, they are now just another good economy, but not the best one. So what do you think about it? And like mentioning that USA will always be the global superpower. I think so is a far too like, uh, like saying... You know, a lot of things uh, can happen at that point of time because the thing is like in terms of trade, if we compare like China is already like defeating America, like if we compare only the army part of it, yes, America is still the superpower and will be the superpower for a long time. But except that, what can be the thing that can propel America to be the superpower? I am very excited to watch it in this video. And this video is not cautioning that will uh, with, will the US always be the global superpower. It is claiming that the USA will always be the global superpower. But I do think so, yes. We, uh, I do think that yes, uh, US always gonna be uh, the global superpower because I do believe that obviously first it has a, you know, a great military and after uh, that it's you know it is also strong financially and i don't think uh, china can debate uh, usa so but you know uh, i also i don't have any that much knowledge but after you know watching this video we will uh, conclude that why you know the usa will always be the global superpower and uh, we we will go, go to, uh, get to know a lot of things from this video so yeah let's watch the video yes and if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe to the channel so let's watch this video at the time of making this video the us stands as the world's largest economy mm. by quite some distance yes. they have the most powerful military on earth with the largest military budget mm. they are the third most populated country in the world third. and the fourth largest country on now earth India by the land first size. So it is fair to country. say they are a global superpower. Hey guys, Sam here from the Geography Bible. I hope you are having a fantastic week wherever in the world you may be. In recent decades, it is quite apparent that other countries of the world are catching up. Yes, China, we are looking at you. But does China or any other nation or region have what it takes to overthrow the US and become the kind world's of, number yes. one superpower? In this video, we shall find out. Let's, see. Let's be honest. There are only a handful of countries who could ever compete for the title of the world's most powerful country. Yeah. To be a superpower, you need a large population, mm. lots of land, wealth, natural resources and military expenditure. Yeah. There is an ongoing discussion that China is emerging as a new superpower and replacing the US from the global power structure. China emerging strongly from the growing global pandemic crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic and Donald Trump's ally alienating policies with NATO have pushed this narrative forward considerably. There is no doubt whatsoever that China is becoming the global powerhouse economically and is expected to surpass the US as the world's biggest economy by 2028. China is still behind but on its way to surpassing the US in military power with increased spending spending on weapons, technology and developing several secretive weapons. So now let's jump into some reasons why the US will always be the global superpower. Firstly, the United States already has a huge lead by the most important measures of national power. China is the only country that comes remotely close and America still has much more than China's wealth and five times its military capabilities. That gap alone would take decades to close, even if things go badly for the US. And as China grows and increases their military might, the US will be doing exactly the same thing. China's growth, if anything, will be motivation for the US to develop yes, and actually. invent new technologies to continue to grow their lead. Also, it is unlikely that things would go badly for the US because it has the best long-term economic growth prospects among the major powers. How? 
Economists have shown that long run growth depends on a country's geography, demography, and political institutions. Mm. The United States has an edge in all of these categories. So, unless something goes catastrophically wrong, like a super volcano eruption at Yellowstone National Park, <laughs> the US is safe in this regard. Geographically, the United States is a natural economic hub and military fortress. It's packed with resources and has more economic arteries like navigable waterways and ports than the rest of the world combined. Whoa. Its only neighbours are Canada and Mexico. China, by contrast, has burned through its resources and is surrounded by 19 other countries, mm -hmm. many don't of which like China are hostile that much. or unstable, and 10 of which still claim parts of China's territory as their own. Yeah. To put it lightly, the US benefits greatly from being rather isolated. Mm. Other superpowers like Russia, India and China all border multiple countries, including each other. Of those, many are unpredictable and unstable. Yes. Demographically, America is the only nation that is simultaneously big, young, and highly educated. The US workforce is the third largest, second youngest, most educated in years of schooling, and most productive among the major powers. Wow. And it is the only major workforce that will grow throughout this century. China, on the other hand, will lose around 200 million workers over the next 30 because years of their population. and add 300 million senior citizens. Chinese workers produce six times less wealth per hour than American workers on average. More than two-thirds of China's workers lack a high school education, and one-third of Chinese young people entering the workforce have an IQ below 90. Okay, oh. so enough about China. What about Russia, the US's yes. sworn enemy during the Cold War era? Russia threatens many US interests. It menaces US allies, props up US adversaries such as Iran and Syria, murders pro-democracy advocates, meddles in elections, and has recently seized foreign territory near its borders. But Russia is not posed to become a rival superpower like the Soviet Union was. Russia's military budget is 10 times smaller than America's. <laughs> its economy is smaller than that of Texas, and its oh. population will shrink 30% over the next 30 years. Russia and it, has it will no do more because allies, of the war. And it faces yeah. NATO, the most powerful alliance in history on its borders. The United States needs to worry about Russia's activities, especially its election meddling and its actions in the Baltics. But it can do so without gearing for another Cold War. But mm. what if Russia and China united their positions? Oh, Russia this and could China be a risky will never one. form a genuine alliance. They share a 2600 mile border, compete for influence across Eurasia, and sell arms to each other's enemies. But Russia and China still harm US interests by acting in concert on a limited set of issues. Mm. For example, both countries have spent billions of dollars on media outlets and hackers aimed at reversing the spread of democracy across the US. Ooh. The two countries have sanctioned US allies and colluded in the United Nations to block or water down US sanctions on North Korea and Iran and other countries. More worryingly, China and Russia would simultaneously start wars with US allies, such as Chinese war with Taiwan and a Russian war in the Baltics, which would seriously stretch the US military forces. Let's also not forget that the US dollar is the world's international currency yes. used by countries all over the At this point of time, planet. yes, but the world Today, is preparing more than for it. 61% of all foreign bank reserves Many countries are, are trying to do another US thing of dollars, it. According to the International Monetary Fund, Create another many currency. of the reserves are in cash or US bonds, such as the US treasuries. Also, approximately 40% of the world's debt is denominated in US dollars. Mm. The reserve status is based largely on the size and strength of the US economy and the dominance of the US financial markets. Despite large deficit spending, trillions of dollars in debt, and the unbridled printing of the US dollar, US Treasury secretaries remain the safest store of money. The yeah. chance of these institutions all swapping their American dollars to Chinese renminbi or Russian rubles is extremely unlikely, and again benefits the US astronomically. Mm. Speaking of crazy wealth, the majority of the most valuable companies on the planet are, are American. In USA, yes. At the time of making this video, seven of the top 10 most valuable companies in the world by market cap 
are American, and out of the top 160 are American companies. A lot of these companies are technology-based organizations that are literally used by billions of people across the planet. All of this revenue, data and information is being gathered by these companies to become only bigger, more powerful and efficient. It would take a serious monumental disaster for any other country to be able to surpass the US's dominance in global trade and finance. Might be right. Also, the American culture is driven by the American dream, particularly by Hollywood is what makes America the most influential country in the world. Any country that tries to build an entertainment industry that rivals that of America is a threat to a US national security too. So to summarize, China has far too many domestic issues that it is ignoring in its race to dominate the world stage. It is likely that one of these problems will cause China, as it's currently iterated, to either contract or fall into another civil conflict. Russia also is burdened by social issues that will preclude it from dominating the political scene anytime soon. The European Union is having trouble keeping a number of they its member do nations it. financially afloat, and in fact keeping many of its countries inside the Union. The language, cultural and historical barriers that have challenged Europe for almost 2,000 years will be still intact for some time to come preventing the EU from seizing world dominance. Over in Japan, their population is contracting and aging. This will make it difficult for it ever to become more than a regional powerhouse militarily, while still remaining an economic powerhouse globally. The other two serious contenders for the most powerful country in the world, Indonesia and Brazil, are both geographically quite isolated, linguistically challenged and have no significant history of military intervention or dominance. While they are both resource rich enough to become world powers, both have serious social issues that will also preclude them from successfully seeking a dominant position on the world stage. Mm. Media hype about the American collapse aside, no single country nor group can do what the US does individually, and most of them aren't foolish enough to even try to replicate yes. this. In my opinion, the US will remain the dominant global power for many yeah. decades to come and beyond. So, what are your thoughts? So, I much of agree to it this this video, but the thing is, like, I feel like not like any country can literally challenge it. But yeah, I think so. They are trying to do it. Like we have seen, like there is a BRICS committee, like in which Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So there is a committee, and like Saudi Arabia also wants to join that committee, and then they want to create another reserve currency. Like they want India's rupee or like the yen of Chinese to become the other another reserve currency, so that they can. Deal with deal all their money in that kind of currency, not in US dollar. So all these things, people are trying these kind of things to make sure that okay, they are not going to directly attack US. That is not even possible. But what they are trying is to sideline USA and to make sure that we are doing our work. You cannot interfere in our work. And by this way, they can make sure that if you have, if even if you have all the powers, you still have to like stay on the side. You cannot just come and attack us. Like USA is known for it. Like being the big daddy of the house like okay it can do whatever it wants and it can make sure that okay if it does not like what is happening in another country it goes on and like tries to work it out like in iraq or in afghanistan it goes for it but then if it does not happen then they pull out so many countries can come and join together they can be like okay usa you have to stay out of it even the sanctions and everything like the world agrees to the u.s sanctions but then if there is not a reserve currency then if dollar is not the reserve currency then they can also try on to do different things so there are a lot of expectations like if militarily uh, we can say that okay for many decades there are no rivals to USA but if we consider all the other parameters then I think so that all the other countries are trying to like commute together and try to make sure that they sideline USA what are your thoughts about it yeah I also do agree that yeah it's uh, many countries are trying to you know side uh, sideline the USA but uh, but uh, as he said that USA uh, com uh, USA has a largest companies basically the companies which is largest in the whole world are from the usa and uh, and uh, america is you know very powerful because of the economy reason and we should also agree on this and on the other hand he talked about the china he said that uh china's uh, wealth is not that 
much good and and he talked about the russia wealth too but yeah we we could also agree on that russia and uh, russia health wealth is not uh, that much good as compared to Aus america and same uh, china's health is not so not good but uh, i do think that yes india could also uh, india can also compete uh, with the usa but right now it's not possible maybe after uh, 20 to 50 maybe after 50 years 50 years he will compete uh it will compete uh usa because uh you india is also becoming stronger day by day and if we talk about the uh, china and other countries so yeah it's not like that only the america is uh, developing a developed country but also the other countries are also developing day by day and they are introducing new weapons uh, we we have to agree that yes americans are american army is so you know strong so uh, strong and powerful but uh, we talk about indian uh, india isro is uh, you know making uh, some uh, making a uh, web uh, doing inventions in a lower budget as compared to nasa so we should also agree on to it and mostly uh scientists uh in america most uh it's like 40 to 30 percent scientists in america are from india so we, we have to agree that indians have that bright mind so i do think that yes in future india can uh, compete with america but on the other uh, side right now america is you know the most powerful country and uh, yeah i'm totally agree with it so yeah, i really like this video yes yeah, so what do you guys think about it do let us know in the comment section below so do like share and subscribe bye, bye.